when we think of archives, what exists as archives, what we discover as an archive of sorts, or what we create as archives, we might imagine for the purposes of our creative intervention that the archive in question is a visual one. It might be photographic. This is what has been concerning us, or at least has been our primary focus on activating our archives. Really what I wanted to draw attention to is that kind of transition between the physical and the digital. And, um, you know, I think that that's, that's kind of, you know, like we're, what we're finding ourselves in the midst of now is, is a very much a digital visual culture where, you know, we, we are going online to store our images. We're sharing our images online. Um, and, you know, people are able to um, uh, comment and, you know, interact with those images in a much more broader way than if they were just pictures that were held in a, in a family album and they were only sort of dug out when people came around for tea. Um, so, you know, there, there, is, there is a huge kind of change that's kind of happened. You said, Sanil, uh, about the, the identity behind Instagram. I think it's a platform of choice because you choose to show the identity you want because uh, Instagram can be so different, like uh, depending on people. You also, of course, you have the aesthetic part with photography and art, but you also have people that watch, that look for a lot of like football games, sneakers, all these things, and everyone can feel really close to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can also show an identity of who you wish to be, who you, you wish that people think you are. So that's what is tricky as well. And I don't think there is something mm -hmm. bad about that. Yeah. Um, either you want to stay true to yourself and show something like raw and pure, or you can show something like a bit... Um, like a fantasy you have about what identity you want to show. And that's the good and the bad part of Instagram, I think. It seems to me that the possible stealing of images on Instagram and the rest is simply the working out of the logic of the infinite replicability of images. And there's nothing to be done about it. Though there's a certain irony in that it's the mega corporations who are using that. You know, when you're collecting images, sometimes an image doesn't make any sense, but then over time, then another image comes, you know, comes into light, and then you're like, oh, well, that there's a relationship there, um, and then something grows out of, you know, over a period of time. Um, especially when you're looking at old images. Um, I think that, you know, especially when it comes to sort of family images, there, there tends to be, you know, certain kind of formats that you'll see a picture being taken in, you know, like especially pictures of people like facing the camera, groups of people, um, that kind of stuff. But then you also get really oddities, you know, where you just get accidents and kind of mishaps or mishaps in the chemical process, which are quite well, aesthetically kind of interesting to look at. I mean, I find it also really helpful is that I find that I'm beginning to collect quite disparate types of information and they don't necessarily sit well to get with each other. Because I come from a background of uh, a certain type of photography, uh, visual photography, real photography. And uh, I have a problem relating uh, my photography to something abstract. Uh, I've not been taking anything abstract. so. That is the transition that I feel that uh, uh, I lack. Uh, you know, uh, you mentioned uh, a lot of projects here that you could do, uh, all imaginary projects. My photography is not very imaginary, if you like, yeah. and that is the struggle. This program, I always intended it to be a little bit pushing the boundaries of photography. I always wanted it to be something that's not about necessarily photography per se, but it's about the, what comes out of photography and visual culture is like, you know, not, not a focus on the photographer, not too much photo uh, focus on the practice, but more focus on, you know, what the images do and the currency they have when they're distributed, where they go, um, what are the possibilities of image making? Obviously, there is 
most of the pictures I know where is my closest family, but my granddad used to do a huge collection of other people. So there is a lot of families in the albums that I actually don't know wow. a lot about it. So I can always create other stories on it. And um, I can push myself to, I don't know, recreate a different story about the other random pictures in the albums. I was told you that uh, I explored how it was difficult for me uh, to manage this information. In the last session, when you speak about how to build an archive, I was asking uh, if my body in this moment, uh, it could be a kind of archive. I, I had a different idea what to do during this um, these sessions, but obviously <clears throat> with the out, out, outbreak uh, of the virus, it, it made any traveling and kind of going out impossible. And then quite early on, the British government advised pregnant women to self-isolate. So I've been in my own house, which has become my, my, kind of my own castle um, for a number of weeks now, probably since the beginning of, of, of March. Um, I'm kind of dealing with, um, uh, dealing with kind of getting quite heavily pregnant, so I'm now probably seven, seven and a half months, um, although the weeks kind of uh, blend together, it's quite difficult to differentiate them. But initially I was working from home and it was kind of fine, then, uh, then the schools closed down, so we had just two weeks uh, where the children, so we've got two daughters and expecting a third one, um, when the children were doing some sort of homeschooling. So then the di dynamic at, in the house at home changed quite significantly. So instead of having this kind of homely space where we would meet in the afternoon or in the evenings, we were constantly um, uh, constantly in the same space, sometimes on top of each other and trying to blend the kind of working, schooling and homely space together. So that has been challenging. I wanted this project um, just to, I suppose, a bit of reflection because of the, the time that we're going through. Um, I thought of, it's a bit nostalgic, obviously, but then I thought, well, maybe that's not a bad thing as we're all reflecting, going through our photo archives. But also, it's also the idea of a city changes as you grow up, obviously, and your relationship to the city changes. So I have a lot of friends um, in some of these photos as well, in this one that you're showing now. Um, you have an idea of a city and the city of Oxford especially. It's not, as you know, you, you've got to have a bit of money to live inside the, the city. So it's a very transitory place. And um, the act of going to the concerts, obviously it was a social thing and we all take that for granted. Um, and I'm just working around looking at some other pictures. I don't really want this to be about sort of rock photography, even though I've started the project like that. Mm. I think involve it, uh, looking at some other spaces and places that I kind of inhabited, which might mean um, something to some people, it might not, but also how the city, um, it's not an easy city to kind of, to stay in a, an established, I suppose, community, because it's so transitory, that's what, I love Oxford, but I also find it a quite annoying city. And at the same time, in the environment that we are now, where our lives simply have been cancelled, you know, we're no longer able to work, we're, not, uh, we're no longer able to socialise. So we kind of been drawn into the, the, homely, the home space uh, ourselves. Um, but at the same time, I mean, there's something kind of paradoxical that um, there's a new life, um, taking place you know we are we are we are waiting for for this new baby to arrive in the time where so many lives are lost and you know so suddenly and unexpectedly i mean this week uh we were informed that one of my uh, colleagues at work died uh because of COVID 19. Mm -hmm. so it's a really difficult kind of mentally uh difficult time to be pregnant although there are obviously kind of um similarities in it as well so I'll, I'm trying to explore I'm, I'm trying to explore that parallel and also the kind of dynamics at home I mean home as a space as a kind of um, 
uh, living and creative space is, is, is of interest to me. So oh. I'm not quite sure where this project's going to go and, and how I'm going to kind of, how I'm going to find a frame for it, but these are the kind of themes I'm thinking of. As it, it was uh, my last opportunity to shut my grandma. And uh, well, for this project, uh, I am exploring my archives and uh, remaining my archives. And when I saw th these portraits, those portraits, I, I recognize a connection with the isolation that we, we are under, we, we are suffering now. These images say a lot because obviously we're all, we're separated from a lot of our families and especially about elderly parents and you know relatives who you know are more vulnerable and it's uh yeah it's a very difficult time for a lot of people you know and uh you know i think this image these images are very powerful because they're kind of you know as, as a reflection on on that sense of isolation that a lot of people face you know I've actually been working with a few things, um, sort of revisiting some um, the family memories about my father and, uh, and also um, keeping alive, I guess, the archive of my family's images. Um, so I've been sort of uh, just going through them and that's been bringing up a lot of um, memories of my father. Um, we're sort of just coming up to six years um, of losing him. so. It's um, just going back and looking how uh, much everybody in our family sort of almost um, mirrors him has been quite interesting just going through the photos, um, both my brother and also my own children. Um, so that's sort of been interesting and a bit, um, a little bit confronting for me, I guess, because I probably haven't looked um, at that closely for quite some time. But then also finding uh, our own journey from the UK uh, to Australia and then my journey back again um, has been very interesting. But uh, so I'm still working on that and how I actually am going to put them together. There's loads more. There's so many. Um, so what I mean, I was just trying to basically that there are photos from my granny's house um, and the link to now um, is that for the first time she's kind of in that house on her own and, and is feeling a bit like a prisoner in a place that's really been shaped up until now by the people that have, that fill it. Um, it's just one of those houses that's always full. Um, so I was trying to think spatially because I thought that was something that was interesting in terms of, um, you know, it is it, for 73 years, it's been the same space that's had many generations of family in it to think about how, how I could organize it in that way. Um, but it's, it, I, I thought that would be easier than it than it's turned out to be. It's quite tricky actually to show where those similar similarities are sometimes. So it's not the full set, but yeah, this is kind of as far as I've got so far, really. Well, they, they certainly take on a, 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 a great, sort of like deal of importance now don't they because it's like how families are kind of are so used to being together you know um in the previous kind of like times where you know now I know that people are separated and it's difficult to go and see your folks or you know your relatives or anything like that so these pictures have a kind of a really like a vital importance now in a way because they kind of just help us like remind us of like you know um, those times when, you know, what we may have took for granted um, of being together, you know, and, you know, they're, they're lovely images, you know, they really are, you know, and uh, and it's like, again, it's like there there is a, obviously, if you think of the house as being a kind of metaphor for this kind of container that, you know, the, the containment that we're kind of like within right now, um, and you think about the way in which we can't connect to each other, then these images really, I don't know, they just take on such a, a, a new like resonance and like importance, don't they? You know, they, they really feel important now. Yeah, they do, they do. And there's one, it's not as um 
that's kind of it's just off of born, so it's not as aesthetically in keeping with the others. But there's one of my granny inside the house, and my that my uncle took when he went to visit her the other day. That made me feel sad because it's just her through the glass on her own in there. Um, but yeah, it does, they do feel like they they feel uh, important at the moment. Um, and I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm okay. working on a bigger archive project, which is using um, reel to reel, Super 8, photographs, cassette tapes, an old family archive. Um, it's kind of challenging because we're still in the middle of it. So that's a little bit trying to um, to do a retrospective, you kind of need some time for that to happen and to go away and to activate an, ar an archive or to actually curate it. You also need a little bit of, of, of time and retrospective. This is a period of time that you're in hospital, right, David? And uh, you're, you're kind of revisiting that archive of images of that period of time, is that correct? About trying to relate to that time, which I find quite difficult to relate to because I'm now cured with a almost certainly. In all of these responses, you know, I'm doing myself as a isolation, my physical exercise, but because mostly I'm using film that is not reliable, I get all these aberrations and they're misty and they're clear and nothing, it's like the fog that we have around us at the moment. Yeah. And I love that kind of ethereal quality. So although I've got other parts of this project that are not the look and feel of this, I wanted to begin with just to craft it in a way that was something that, that felt, that, that spoke to each other or looked visually as if they were a part of one body. So and these are, you know, in a sense, very domestic photographs. Most of them are taken in the house, but I've also mixed in um, just a couple of found texts. So it's a, uh, um, they're in the house or in the garden. But obviously, I, I guess, like all of us, become very aware that while we're having a, you know, we're, we're fortunate to be having a very comfortable time in the house, that actually the world just over the road from us is a very different place. Um, we've got the big John Radcliffe Hospital entrance opposite us. So I was trying to capture that kind of tension between the the fact that actually we're experiencing as a family quite a pleasant and privileged time we're having good time together as a family um, we're having time to do things and it's quite calm in our house with the fact that over the road um, there's a John Radcliffe hospital where um, both patients and employees are suffering um, terrible times terrible stress uh, for me it's, it's a challenge that I'm cutting images in a digital way because I never feel that I had, you know, I, I, I wrote about it because for me, it's really sensitive still uh, cutting these images because I still feel connected with it. Yeah. Um, so I feel that it's a slow process, uh, but I'm starting feeling more confident in cutting, start creating a different narrative about it. Yeah. Um, so on this previous picture, I start feeling that I should start including myself in the pictures. That's why on the previous ones, I, I always like to put my hands um, because I'm writing about my granddad, but it's a story about me. The kind, the kind of comes from the appreciation of the of the domestic space and the fact that you know it's a, it's it's almost like a castle for us. You know, we are safe within that space. That space gives us gives us safety and light. And I was trying to kind of reflect that. Um, Cause whenever, you know, whenever, whenever I go out and kind of, you know, especially if I go to hospital, um, you know, what it does to you, to, to your mental state is actually quite, um, it's actually uh, quite, quite, it's quite a strong reaction, you know, to find yourself in an environment where, you know, there's so many warnings, there are so many new rules and um, you have to, you know, we are social animals, humans, and, but in those uh, but in those environments, you have to really be far away from from each other. And you can see that you know the the members of staff, you know, doing all the uh, scans and so on. They they're not very comfortable with what they do. They have to do it. But the kind of the human contact, which normally is very pleasant, mm. uh, this time around becomes a, a kind of a danger. So mm. so that's why it's it's a relief to come back home and to kind of feel right. You know, this is the space where where we are all fine. 
I wanted to keep doing things that are tactile, not just virtual and digital at the moment, to break away from, you know, looking at at, at um, screens and, and not being able to feel things or experience things in the same way. Yes, recently really been working with other things. Uh, and one of them is uh, trying to dig up all the archives of my grandfather and my family, mm -hmm. um, which uh, actually moved from India to, to Uganda in the 1920s or 30s. Well, the first one is the bringing together of a found archive, which initially was separated. Mm -hmm. But then I thought the two halves needed to be together. The first part of the archive were family holiday snapshots in, I guess, Germany in the 1930s. Uh -huh. And the second part were photographs taken in a Nazi death camp. As I started the, trying to compare those, uh, uh, the idea of, the, of all the archives of the Spanish flu uh, and the COVID, uh, the first thing that actually came uh, into my uh, mind you know, as a strong uh, thing is that I discovered that actually the Spanish flu has, doesn't have anything to do with Spain. Mm. But the fact that uh, the Spanish newspaper were the only one reporting on it. That was it. I mean, that's the thing that really struck me. It's just that the, the statistics are now meaningless. Um, mm. The numbers are too large for us really to kind of comprehend. And also it tells us nothing about each one of those individuals and the whole kind of circle of friends and family that they have and how that has affected them. Yeah. And I think, and then that, that second image is my grandfather who died when my mother was four my brother died when his daughter was four and you see i can see from my mother's life what a, an enormous influence that was on her and why she you know she felt that loss till she died i've got a number of things on the go which i haven't actually added yet still looking taking pictures on my walks and my rides of people throwing things away um, which has been quite interesting um, sort of throwaway society that we seem to have and how much fly tipping is around, even though everybody's supposed to be isolated, which I find really interesting. So it's sort of gone back to the ideas behind my granddad and archiving his history. Mm -hmm. It's quite current because we've just, just lost him. Um, and I, I'm staying in his house at the moment. So I'm surrounded by all of these memories and, um, I discovered that he meticulously archived his photographs. Some of them have even got time stamps on them, not just dates. So there's a heck of a lot to go through. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's been quite a journey, emotional in some ways as well, but uh, sort of discovering how similar we are. And I'm not sure he ever realized that. <laughs> but new forms of colonialism. The, the the exploration of the body as an archive as well, the privacy uh, invasion, uh, the colonialization of the bodies, these uh, different um, topics. And yeah. yes, I, I I would like to make more videos and and don't don't stop because I I like this this way to to work. I, I I feel more relaxed uh -huh. than don't don't have the pressure to to say something special. But I think that I, I, I for another way I am saying something that is very important for me. I continue to explore a lot of um, sources online, like um, library that gathers completely tons of different um, materials. And I liked the, um, the random factor that I used. I don't know what I'm looking for, but I'm completely exploring. I'm hunting in a way. How we used to socialize going to concerts and, and obviously we don't know when that occasion will happen again. I can't quite imagine going to a gig with lots of people at the moment, obviously. I don't know how long that, that could be 
I don't know, two years away? Uh, I have this feeling that I, I kind of want to go back home and recreate more things with the archives that we have in Portugal in my parents' house. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, I will keep creating with what I have. But it's a work in progress because definitely I want to do more things. And I would say I have a second idea of a project based with what you said, the last uh, workshop something that includes more of my body on the project mm -hmm. but for now i think i should just keep on creating with the colleges yeah, it's, it's just been really good to have something to uh take my mind off of it to be honest with you so thank you for still hosting it well you can see with the latest pictures i'm i'm moving i'm focusing on pictures that i've taken in in Oxford, it still ties into anywhere by here because, because well, n nice weather in Oxford doesn't usually last too too long. If you can see from the pictures of the ducks and and the uh, flowers, I'm gonna upload more pictures pictures of, uh, of of things I've taken in Oxford and in and in Yarnton, Yarnton, yeah. and and connect to how how. I I still wish I was anywhere, but but right here, how, how I wish I was. It, especially now, it seems like every every day every day this uh, this lockdown is still putting a lot of pressure on people and make me wish I was back in Japan or Turkey or Vienna, or or just any or just or just places I've never been to holiday before. What we wanted to do is to thank you for engaging with the project and for all your work. Um, it's appreciated by me, Modern Art Oxford and Fusion Arts, and we want you to continue posting onto Instagram with the hashtag over the summer and also onto Padlet, developing your own stories, sharing pictures with each other and commenting on each other's ideas. So it's this, this idea of community that's really kind of come out of all of this. The, the community started last year with activating our archives and it's continued this year and so many of you who participated last year have, have done so and stayed on this year as well so it feels like this is something almost of like a continuation of last year and something that's growing as well um, and I'm really pleased to do that that community is not only been confined to here in Oxford but it's kind of reached out to different parts of the world as well so we're really proud that we've been able to kind of you know interest people in different parts Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank thank you, you, Chanel. You. Have a good summer. Thank bye. you. Thank you, Sonia. Oh, thank you, Nadia. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye. 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 See you soon. Oh. Look, look forward to seeing you. Thanks, Dave. It was great. Oh. Obrigado. Thank you, Leo. Have a great Thanks. summer.